Well, good evening, everyone. It is Ghostly Archives time. Tuesday night is a regular spooky night. Although, you know, honestly, I do spooky stuff on my, even my news podcast. I mean, this Friday, you guys don't want to miss it. We're going to have Tinfoil Hat Friday, and we're probably going to talk about um, Donald Trump as a time traveler. Isn't that weird? Okay. My guest just was in the green room and she's just disappeared. Hopefully she'll come back. I'm going <laughs> to, well, I wasn't expecting that. We are talking about ghosts though. So um, let's see. But um, anyways, guys, while I'm trying to make sure that um, my guest Tilly is every is okay, if you guys would do me the favor of reposting, sharing, um, subscribing on all the uh, platforms. She's back. We she's back. All right. It was probably an internet thing. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll bring her in in a second. You guys share the content. Um, subscribe. I also encourage you to subscribe to um my guests YouTube channel. Please um always support the guests that come on the show. Tilly's YouTube channel is called The Weird Walk Home. And I encourage you to check her out and subscribe and watch her stuff as well. And remember, share, 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 especially on, um, oh, we got we got a few people in the chat in YouTube. Howdy Incognito and Howdy John Aside. I hope you guys are having a good evening. Now, um, we are streaming on Rumble. So if you would be so kind to subscribe on Rumble. It's new. I have 15 subscribers. Not very many. Most of y'all coming from X, but uh, it's Gen X on X over at Rumble. Mostly political stuff, but I'm streaming this show because, you know, Mandela Effect, what we're going to talk about tonight is one of those really strange, I don't know, I don't want to call it like mindfuck kind of thing, but it's one of those strange phenomenons that really get you thinking, okay? So we're going to be talking about that. And remember, if you want to support me as well, financially, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash genxnews. It's right down there at the bottom if you want to type it in and donate to help this, this little show keep running. So I'm, I'm not going to put it off any much longer. I'm going to bring my guest in before she disappears again. <laughs> All right, Tilly, Welcome. Hi, thank you so hey. much for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry for the uh, connection issues tonight. For anyone who may not know, we just moved out into the country. We don't have our Wi-Fi yet, and uh, internet's pretty spotty here, so I apologize for anything that may or may not occur. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If, if it was me, I would move out somewhere out in the middle of nowhere or away from society, too. And if the cost was not as good internet, I might just take that cost. I don't know. Maybe contact Elon and the Starlink. I don't know. <laughs> figure it out somehow. <laughs> All right. So before we get into Mandela Effect, maybe let the audience know who you are and how you got into this kind of topic or, or why you're interested in it. I think I can handle that. So my friends, I wish you a merry morning or a magical midnight wherever you are. It is a joy and a pleasure to be here. And as far as my backstory goes, um, I've just been having paranormal occurrences since I was in the, uh, the, the baby carrier. And I, I've always been interested because of those events just carrying through my entire life. Then when I was a little bit younger, I happened to be uh, essentially recruited onto part of the exorcist team for the Catholic Church. And I served about a year there. <clears throat> and then I, I decided to go my own way. And I was offering healings, tarot card readings, all of that good stuff, uh, some mediumship services and space cleansing, advising, all the good stuff there. And I retired a few years ago from that for the most part. Then I met Tim Swartz from Ancient Aliens and uh, he wanted me to come right on his team. I did that. Now we have launched a YouTube channel together and um, the rest is, as they say, history. Here I am. <laughs> so what, what's so intriguing about the Mandela effect? 
that made you want to research and get into that because I'm in some groups and some of it, I think, yeah, well, that I doubt it. I know how human memory goes, but some of it, it's like, sure. Yeah, no, that's really bizarre. I completely agree with you, my friend. Um, the Mandela effect, I have been witnessing that since I was about three or four years old and I know what I saw. And mm -hmm. later on proof would come up that, maybe I wasn't as nutsy as what people were saying that I was. And I've always found that intriguing because it seems to me that there is an extremely subjective side to the Mandela effect that is later on often backed up by what appears to be objective truth. So that was my start within the Mandela effect. Uh, and interestingly enough, the book that I'm writing right now with Tim Swartz and the team over at Zontar, we're focusing on topics like the Mandela effect and dimensional shifts and dimensional rifts and how that may or may not play into incarnate existence and incarnate experience here in the 3D. That's my backstory anyway with the Mandela effect. Um, but I do think that it is heavily tied into death and timeline shifts, which I think go hand in hand. And I have, uh, I, I could recount even my most recent near death experience um, because I have, I think a, a pretty cool story to tell about that too, if you'd like. Please do go ahead. Sure. All right, so I'm pretty new to the paranormal arena, and people may not know. Um, I have a pretty complex <laughs> genetic profile, and mm -hmm. part of that includes porphyria. Porphyria is a set of genetic differences. You could even say in some ways disabilities, because I can't tolerate the sunlight. It makes the red blood cells essentially from what I understand explode and then it causes organ damage trying to get that out of the system and it's activated by uh, UV light. Part of my genetic profile is that I have an extremely sensitive nervous system to the point where even medications and supplements that are said to be safe for literally everyone there's still a 50% chance that it could cause me harm, be overactive or underactive in my system. Well, mm -hmm. I had taken advice from doctors and I was on a certain uh, thyroid desiccant for the last about year and a half or so. And over the weekend of March 24th, um, I think that's about when it was, I'm still dealing with some, some brain fog. No One worries. evening I just, huh? I said, no worries. <laughs> um, I started having a bunch of really strange symptoms. It started off with rapid heartbeat and then it progressed into feeling extreme brain fog and, and just, I couldn't think straight and I was sweating profusely, extreme temperature dysregulation. And, uh, then I started getting tunnel vision and I was having a lot of trouble even It kept getting worse to the point where I was afraid that I was going to pass out. So I elected to call an ambulance. And Hopefully her internet will click back in, guys. She's just having a little bit of connection problem. Um. Oh, drats. Well, that happens sometimes where people have a little bit of a connection issue, but I'm sure it'll hook back in. If not, she will come back on. Um, I just want to bring up a, a comment that is in the chat while she is regulating that out for everyone. We have a comment that said they had a uh, John side has said he had a bunch of Mandela effects after a past life regression where we changed some things. And I asked him, wow, you changed it through past life regression. And he said, yeah, it wasn't a big deal during it, but after a bunch of stuff, there was different and it faded after a while. 
I know things change, but I can't recall everything that did. Okay, so that's really interesting. Welcome back. <laughs> it's all good. I'm so sorry, I was just going guys. over a comment. Oh. It's okay. I, I was just <sighs> going over comments that someone had while you were out that someone had mentioned that when they did past life regression, it had they changed things and it sort of caused a Mandela effect. I'm not at all. Later. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not at all surprised about about that. Um. You were talking about your porphoria and what you went through on the weekend, uh, that weekend, like you had to go, you were really not well. Yeah. Yeah. When the ambulance got there, um, I'm sorry, when the fire truck, they arrived first mm -hmm. here in Florida and they took all of my vitals and whatnot. They saw that my blood pressure was, was dropping and, but my heart rate rate was really high. And they could tell that I wasn't walking right, I wasn't talking right, all of that. Um, so they called for uh, EMS, which thankfully they were already en route because of my symptoms. And shortly before the EMS, um, or EMTs maybe I should say, arrived, I had to sit down. And the I, it's the weirdest thing. I was being blasted, it felt like, in and out of my body from here to what I ask the realm or the DMT realm. And I would see seals over my vision that, vision that would give way to just like hundreds of pairs of eyeballs and non-human people watching me. And some of them were like trying to, to point and tell me like, Wow. seemingly to give me advice and that, I got the feeling that a lot of them were just really curious about where I was going to wind up and I felt like I was spinning and being rouletted and then I landed here so I went to the the wow. emergency room found medication to like medication immediately because it was that bad over and helped me like my blood pressure and the, I was having really serious anxiety to the point where I could um, barely talk, um, like make coherent sentences. I've, and I've never experienced this before. What they found out is that I was having a horrible reaction to um, thyroid medication and it was poisoning my blood. So oh dear. that was that. I spent time in the hospital. I came home. When I was able to eat my, my appropriate food again, I always have trouble. Well, I, I'm sorry. I always had trouble with a certain wisdom tooth, tooth that grew in really harshly and crookedly against one of my molars. I ate my food, and then I realized I wasn't having any pain or feeling anything stuck back there. So I went to use some um, floss as I usually would. And it's usually such a pain in the butt. It would take me like half an hour to get food unstuck from there. It sucked. I felt no tooth whatsoever. There was no food stuck anywhere in there. I couldn't believe it. So I went to the mirror. And, you know, I'm like prying my mouth open in the uh, and I'm feeling the, tooth, the entire wisdom is completely gone. I don't care anymore. I just have a straight row of, of and um, that was the biggest tell, I think, to me that I lines. At least that's that's my belief. That's my opinion. And um, I say it was the worst medical experience of my life. But I'm grateful. Good for me in the long run because I lost. I got a lot more super important information of my uh, genetic profile so that I can hopefully be here longer <laughs> and have have more fun with you guys. So.
Well, that's um, interesting that uh, about the wisdom tooth. That's really fascinating. And um, so from what I understand about the actual official Mandela effect is that it was actually coined the Mandela effect because I believe it was 1980, people all thought that Nelson Mandela had died in prison in 1980, but he hadn't. And they could have swore that they seen advertisement, like news reels and everything announcing his death in 1980s. But he, of course, he was alive and released from prison. So they started to call this the Mandela effect. Have you heard that? I, think we have, I um, have heard that this origin was from Fiona Broom. And for, I remembered... Um, Nelson Mandela in prison in 1991. But what's your memory? Oh, you just cut out there. It's a, it's, oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna pop a little video on here. Let me go to my designs here. We'll get a little video. Some some of the Mandela effects, I'm like, okay, no, this has got to be, there's something to this. And some of them, I'm like, mm, I don't know. I'm just trying to see what's what. He claims that CERN destroyed the universe during recent experiments, which has resulted in us living in a nearby parallel universe instead. You're welcome, Eddie. There's a lot of people online that, <laughs> that think this is an explanation for all the Mandela effect things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 he goes online. into stuff about the Mandela effect. How you know there's like so apparently a bunch of people who think Mandela died in prison. Right. And like there's you know and yeah. as far as I know he was released, became president of South America. You know, and that's the universe right. I'm yeah. from, just personally. <laughs> I find it, I'm going to pop her back up. I find it really interesting that they're equating CERN and a lot of the experiments that they're doing with Mandela effects. And then we have like, it's interesting that we have in, in our chat, people talking about past life regressions. It's, it's like, it's like they're two different ways of playing with time. And from what I understand what they're doing with CERN now is they are trying to recreate the moments after the big bang. They're like that's time travel. That's crazy. That that's crazy. I don't know what your thoughts about that that is. Yeah, I think personally that it is feasible. So my understanding is that there are two different types of time and timeline travel. The organic type, which is how the universe and our souls function, so organically jumping timelines from near-death experiences or just because our higher selves want to take a completely different road. But then I also fully believe that once humankind starts to interact with the quantum more intimately and starts to... Uh, surpass a certain level of expertise, I really do believe that they are creating a 3D and sometimes even 4D version of time travel, timeline transference. And I think that this is also where the Mandela effect can and does come from. Um, what do you think? Well, I think it's really interesting that people have these, like they swear on that certain things were spelt certain way. Something was different. The Fruit of the Loom logo had the cornucopia. I think it's really interesting. And it, it, it to me, it says like the organic way, I think, is probably more common right now yes. because people are I think there's something happening with mind and thought and time and in a way we don't necessarily understand it I think some things are explainable like I know um like with uh, my uh, my grandmother she would tell stories and they were consistent they were the same stories about what had happened in the past and ash when she was older just before she died I noticed her getting this combining the stories and and get, mm -hmm. getting them more confused so 
like that can happen where people get things confused. But there are people who are saying, no, I swear to God, and it, it, it was like that. And I think something is happening just like when John aside in our chat is talking about his mind and going back in hypnosis and changing certain things in the past that caused a Mandela effect in the future. I think the organic way we're doing it and it's really a natural process maybe and it's like almost seamless but i i am suspicious about this cern way mm -hmm. that because it's not organic it's not seamless and there could be some kind of a really strange consequence for humans sure. that we don't foresee and i'm not sure what it is i'm not gonna pretend to know <laughs> yeah yeah i'm with you on that and i i don't support humankind doing that type of exploration because of exactly what you said. Uh, consequences, we don't know what they could be. We don't know who else they may not, or they may or may not affect. We don't know where the effects may ripple out to. And um, it, it's, it's tough for me because I personally don't support it. However, I believe that God or the creative source wants to explore every and any possible outcome. And so this is just another one of those trails. And who am I to, to judge? That's what I think mm -hmm. about it. Although I personally just don't support it. I just don't think it's a good idea. But I also am pretty risk averse. <laughs> I'm not a gambling yeah, girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But I, I totally think that their experiments are having some type of effect. And Something else that I, I think I understand, if it's true anyways, is that in the, in you could say the 4D and the 5D and beyond, those people, um, typically I would say they're, they're non-human people, they have access to many, many different timelines. And so they can organically choose and jump as they please. And some human people seem to have caught on to this and develop their own methods of doing this, which also that's something I discuss in the book coming out soon with Tim, uh, like the two cup method, jumping from dimension to dimension using that method. And there are lots of other methods available as well that seem to work here on this 3D plane. So therefore I just don't think that what CERN is doing is necessary. It, it screams, in a, a strange sense, materialism to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that once someone gets too far down the materialist road, even if we are talking uh, quantum materials, I think that that's where we get into more of a destructive zone, if that makes sense. Yeah. It does. And one of the other elements about the CERN stuff that I uh, concerns me is they're very strange almost satanic bizarre rituals that go with the opening of that tunnel and it's it's not it's very it's like they're trying to bring some kind of old god back so it's not just like oh we want to see about time travel it feels like they're trying to open something and let something through that probably really should just leave it alone yeah and I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not going to pretend to know. But the fact, it, if they were just experimenting, it would be one thing. But the rituals associated with it make me a little bit suspicious of what their real knowledge and intent is and what they really know and what they're telling us they know. And it may even be that the scientists don't know. They think they're doing one thing and someone higher up is like, nah, we're doing something else. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly my thought. That's exactly my thought. Um, I've worked in professional groups that are compartmentalized before. And so I, I think I might have seen a few clues that what you're saying is correct, that it is compartmentalized. The lower down people don't know what's going on, but there are higher up people pulling the strings. And mm -hmm. I think, I believe that we live in a blended universe. I believe that there are many, many people who walk amongst humankind who are not human or who are hybrids, and they may or may not have the best interest at heart for humanity. So when I look at what you're saying, 
and I compare it to what I've seen the people at CERN doing, it seems to me that there are either human sellouts or possibly non-human people behind the scenes pulling these strings to try to bring someone or something back. And I think that that's where it's, we get into some very dangerous territory. And this is why I don't recommend personally worshiping at all. I don't deal with religion. I don't recommend it. I don't like it. And I think that worship is a form of um, negative Violation. energy vampirism. Oh, interesting, because you're feeding your energy to uh, an, a deity or an entity who I don't know. Yeah. And so for me, I, I my personal rule is that I would only trust the non-human people who are here living out a lifetime on Earth because, as you could say, they have skin in the game, you know, and they're enmeshed with a human society. So they're invested to one degree or another for the health of everyone because even for the healthy and the positive towards humanity, energy empaths, which all empaths, non-human empaths are technically energy vampires, but that doesn't make them evil necessarily. And evil right. is subjective. It doesn't make them though, like against humankind, but to have a non-personal relationship with a being like what CERN is trying to seemingly call forth, I think is a, ra a recipe for disaster for everyone involved. If anyone was going to get involved with a non-human person, I would recommend you have a personal one-to-one -one relationship with that person where you both agree to treat each other as equals and with love, compassion, honesty, as best as possible. And it's a one-to-one. -one. It's not like what they're doing at CERN, which to me just screams mass food farming, which is how some non-human people certainly seem to see humankind. And I don't think that that's a fair shake. You know what I mean? But if, yeah, if, but it's, it's a different kind of food in this realm. It would be like a, a energetic thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be, I mean, unless, unless I'm mistaken and they are planning to fix it. <laughs> devour us i mean it's always possible i've seen enough horror movies but it's, yeah it's yeah it's it is disturbing because it's so and i know there's people out there who are listening and you'll say oh melissa you're being ridiculous it's so silly it's just a hat you know it's a hat on clutter they're just separating molecules and finding they're pretty much looking for dark matter or something you know they're looking for their 17 molecules or something like that that that's out there that they think exists that they've never really proven and mm -hmm. it, I, it reminds me of that book series, His Dark Materials. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or they, there was a TV series, but it's, no. uh, I won't ruin it, but it's, they're on a quest finding dust or dark matter. And they, and in one of the books they cut like through a portal and these dark things come out and they have this special knife where they do that. And in the first book, they've got these um, kids, you have a daemon attached to you and it appears as a little creature. And it, when you're young, it changes form. But as you get older, it shapes into one animal. And in the book, there there's these people kidnapping children. And they're doing experiments in, on them, trying to separate them from their daemon to stop them from going into puberty. Seriously, God. Whoa. It's, me it's messed up. Dark series. It's really good, though. It's a very good. I can't wow. remember the the third one's the amber spyglass, but they're and in this one of the the that they're bad. The the mother and father are bad characters because they're doing a lot of this stuff. They're looking, they're really corrupt people, and they're they're looking for this dust or dark material. And there's angels. It questions religion. It's really crazy. It's a three book wow. series, and there but there is a TV series, a BBC TV series on it. And there was a movie they made with no Nicole Kidman, but they didn't go through all the books, but there's a series on it. And it's it was a really fascinating book. And when I hear this stuff of CERN and portals and angels and God and religion, I'm like, I swear to God, I read this before. And I was like, his dark materials. Oh my God. <laughs> it's really, really interesting that this book was written decades ago and I'm seeing this stuff right now and I'm going, oh my yeah. goodness. 
psychic? Are they, is it, what, what do they call that when they, they tell us what they're up to in books before they actually do it? it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's technically, um, in my understanding, a type of, um, disclosure, but also a type of permission seeking. So mm -hmm. a lot of the time, and again, this is just my understanding. A lot of the time, from what I seem to understand, people will read books like that and think that it's really cool. And so them thinking that it's cool is a type of permission and invitation. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, because it's yeah. they're saying, oh, that's cool. Let's do it. But I, I would say it's um, lying by omission. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, <laughs> it is. is. Yeah, you're it's telling very someone it's, it's fantasy. It's not real. But I think people don't understand how reality is and that their thoughts make things happen. And yeah. if you're if you've watched a fantasy book and you start fantasizing about it like kids do or whatever, and you start thinking about it after and it's in your mind, you're actually helping, yeah. I think, bring it bring it forth. I don't know if you think that's Amen, crazy. sister. That's <laughs> so why you have to be careful. That's so why you have to be careful what you watch and what you consume, I guess. Yep. That's why I'm I'm really boring. I don't have cable. I don't watch any stuff like that. I spend I spend all of my time if I'm not working on the show or writing for Tim or um hanging out with the the few friends that I do have, I'm either cleaning my house, spending time with my husband, my cat, or I'm learning about psychology and or just other positive things so that I can continue to mm -hmm. grow and um, contribute positively to this society. So I, I don't really endorse the reading of um, fantasy materials and whatnot because a lot of that, right. in my opinion, is moral garbage. It's, it's filled with half truths and sexual vulgarity and violence mm -hmm. and i i just don't think it's a good idea really i don't I, i'm not saying like video games make people you know kill each other i'm just saying that i think but it it focuses your mind in energy somewhere that's not necessarily yeah. for you making a better life yeah yeah i agree no, I and totally it's, get it's it's like people who hang around other people who curse a lot eventually most people are going to start picking up that habit. And mm -hmm. I don't know. All right. Well, I'm going to pop off another video here. Let's check this out. Take a little drink break here. Here we go. If I can get it on. Is this the one? We'll now throw a switch, which will either answer certain obscure questions of subatomic physics or destroy the universe. <laughs> Oh my god, Particle. What is it, Professor? You can tell your grandchildren you were here when humanity finally learned that this accelerator is much too small to tell us anything important. Oh, Thanks a lot, Lisa. That money could have been used for a war. Ah, no one takes Willie's mop. <laughs> Take the mop. Take the mop. <laughs> huh? <gasps> A mini black hole. Take it away before more clueless kids fall into it. Geronimo! As rich. As poor and shackless. Lisa, do you have a stray dog down there? That's another one, those examples of the Simpsons predicting things and writing about things. Now, I'm not saying CERN's going to make a black hole and suck us all up, but it's interesting that they 
kind of show a, a really similar situation of firing up this machine that's going to alter the fabric of your universe, you know, that kind of concept. So I don't know what's going up. There's, there's a thing where people look at the Simpsons and try to see if they've predicted stuff. I don't know if that's some kind of Mandela effect. I don't know what that is. I don't know, but I, I think that there might be something to the Simpsons. I, I can't say for sure. It just, it's, awfully interesting to me that it seems like they get certain super specific things right you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah like yeah. like like the Trump coming down the escalator and running for president yeah and, uh, that was yeah fun. and and then there's a couple of other scenes like where he's holding his hand over those globes in the cartoon and it's something he actually did yeah I was like <laughs> I'm like what the what the hell is going on? I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just like shaking my head going, okay, something, there's something else to the universe. And I believe in law of, I don't know if you believe in law of attraction or anything like that, or like your thoughts mm -hmm. attract things. I don't think it's as simple as you just think about it and you get it right away. I, but agree. I, I think that it has something to it. So I don't know if that's playing or I don't know. Like it seems that most people see the Mandela effect as like, product changes or the change in like the bear same bears do you think it goes beyond that or like it just seems oh, that really focuses on that yeah I, I really do think it goes far beyond that uh oh, who was it one of my favorite youtubers eva on once upon a timeline she has a whole channel dedicated to the mandela effect and she'll talk about sometimes seeing her own personal massive Mandela effects, such as a whole building popping up overnight. But when she'd look at the building, it looks like it's been there for 20 years, but she knows for fact it for her, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Things like that. So I, I personally think that um, things are changing around us all the time, but that some people are more aware and more sensitive to it than mm -hmm. other people. And I think too, that, some people are really good at rationalizing away their own observances because their observances may say, yeah, <laughs> they might sound crazy, you know, the C word again. But um, I, I definitely think that it touches all aspects of almost everyone's lives. That, that's just my theory. And then too, about that CERN clip that you played, what if, they do actually open black holes when they fire that thing up and we just don't know that we've been sucked into it that gets into the the for example the whole um theory that we all died in 2012 which i think is also a possibility but does dying have to be a bad thing i don't think so i see dying as just being the transition to the next vibration of existence for a person and i think that we go somewhere that matters our overall at that time um yeah so who's to say that this didn't end firing it up again well yeah and, and i know um what was the first year they fired it up 2008 or something like mm -hmm. that that's when, that's, when Obama, that's when Obama came in as president. I'm going to check on that. But I think um, CERN first um, used. Oh, well, 1951 is when they started it, but that's not when they first fired it up. Hmm. Um, turned on. Let's see. Um... I can't find it. Large Hadron, yeah. Um, it's a, uh, oh, let's see, here we go. Um, the Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and highest, highest energy particle collider. It was built by the European Organization for Nuclear Research uh, between 1998 and 2008 in collaboration with over 10,000 scientists and hundreds of universities. 
The first collisions were achieved in 2010 at an energy of 0.5 tera electron volts per beam, about four times the previous world record. So I think it was turned on in 2008, and then they did the first collisions in 2010. And I think they um, that's they found that the Higgs boson in 2012. That's mm-hmm. what they were looking for. And then between 2013 and 2015, it was shut down and upgraded. So we didn't have it on for a while. And then after that, at the end of 2018, it was shut down again. And then it's reopened over three years after April 22nd. So it's interesting because they shut it down for several years. I'm wondering if things calm down in society, like something It's I don't know. And then after 2015, everything went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that's a good question. I, I don't know. It just seems interesting to me how they are cycling through starting it up and shutting it down. And I wish I wish we could know why. Yeah, I guess they have to maintain it and I don't know, maybe have their satanic rituals and open it up again. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have a comment. Um, I, someone um, incognito, that's my husband. He said, I had that happen with the dome building I told you about. It wasn't there three years ago and now it's there. Oh, there's a building that I can't remember where it was, but he just said it suddenly feels like it just appeared, this building, and mm-hmm. he, didn't, you know, he he drives by there all the time as a trucker, and he never seen anything, and all of a sudden there's this big dome building, and he's like, what? So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, that happened to my husband, too. The one day we were out driving, and um, he had placed an order, and on his – app he thought it was just the same address so he hit the button not paying any attention when we got there of course his order wasn't there they're like we don't have your order it's at this other location and he's like that location's like a mile away I've never seen it never heard of it and I drive by there all the time and now all of a sudden there's a fully functioning Wawa sitting there and they have my order that's so bizarre That's, that's, that's really bizarre. Now there's, okay, I've got, it's, this is a little bit more trivial. It's a really quick clip, guys, so you have to pay attention. But I think this is explainable logically. I think this is silly, but this is an example of what people are putting out there about the Mandela effect. Here we go. We got La 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 Marilyn. I guess they're trying to say her mole moves, but I'm just assuming it's not real and she just draws it on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hmm. I guess I would need to see doctors examining it and, and photographing it and verifying that it's a real mole. And then I would need to, <clears throat> excuse me, also see her for myself and attempt to remove it because you can get fake moles now. Yeah, and put them on your face with a little bit of eyelash glue. And some people use them in the theater uh, industry. I know Madonna drew one on sort of trying. Uh, she might have had one, but she would try to copy Marilyn. But, I mean, Marilyn was one of the earlier actresses who had plastic mm-hmm. surgery. She had her nose done. She had her chin done. So, and her hair mm-hmm. was bleached out. You know, she was one of the earlier actresses that did a lot of, did some surgery to look. A certain way which is so it's not even just commonplace now now it's like it's crazy where they like they don't yeah. even look remotely remotely the same but um it, it's it's hard to say because um oh someone's saying the mole is 100 percent real she frequently accentuated it that's interesting. interesting someone's waiting on the mandela effect to be the mendel uh <laughs> Yeah, I think I think he means Mandela to Mandela. Yes. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It's funny. Okay. So I I think I think we I think the reason we focus on like the packaging and stuff is because it's like I, it's obviously marketing is a huge part of our life. But you got to wonder if there what do you know that there was any kind of report of this in the past where people would say this, like, because you hear modern stuff, but it's all about, like, packaging. Mm-hmm. 
or products or movies or songs, you know, because we have ways of recording it, right? We have pictures, we have video, everyone has cell phones now. We have way better record keeping of this stuff. And people are saying, no, no, it's changed. I have this memory. But is there anything in history like that you know of where people are talking about a similar effect? To be honest, no. Um, Unless you want to count the secondhand accounts and reports of people who say, oh, my grandma or my grandpa or my mom or my dad or my great uncle told me about this thing being this way back in their heyday and now it's this way and then they count that as a Mandela effect. I think that that could be accurate, but I don't, I don't know. Of course I wasn't, I wasn't there. I think it's possible though. And I think that um, branding didn't used to be quite a big deal from what I understand way back in the day. And so I think that it's such a a modern phenomenon because of how prevalent branding is these days. What do you think? That's my take anyway. (laughs) So, well, it's interesting. I I was trained as a graphic designer. I have my degree in that. And it's become, we've always had forms of propaganda, Mm -hmm. but they've been a lot different from today. Even in the Roman Empire, they had ways of communicating whose property you're on or who you're visiting. They would do like like reliefs or stamps, and they would do sure. it. In different, they would do it in different ways. But today, the branding is everywhere. I mean, even I have branded myself right up in the corner. I look at the logo. Everyone thinks a company. It's the logo, but it's. The logo is a mark. It's a quick mark where you can identify really quick and it's loaded with a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to be loaded with color, sights, smells, feelings. Uh, it's going to link you to certain celebrities or it's a sexuality or if you're cool. And they put that all together and they load it. And I always look at logos as almost like sigils. So they're kind of magic. Yeah. And the best companies, they have lots of money and they have really powerful logos that lure people to their stuff. You know, it's like, um, and, Mm -hmm. and the best logos, I guess, in terms of consumerism are able to get people to identify their identity with their company's identity and closely bond them to them so that they're loyal. You could say slaves in control, but they're loyal to that brand, like an iPhone or anything. But I always looked at it like a magical sigil, but we've always had branding. We've always had something like that all along, but it's not quite as, it's very, it's all over the place. Everyone's has a logo. There's print everywhere. There's communication. Mm -hmm. It's it's also in America, at least it's very, um, what's the word? Um, It's. It's not a, it's, it's very sleek and suave. It's, it's very well done. So you don't even really notice you're being branded to something and hypnotized or you're actually acting with what I would call a magical sigil. But that, I mean, that's my opinion. It's always been there to communicate, but because we're more able to read and stuff like that, they have to become more clever with it. And with the development of tabloid media, right around Jack the Ripper's time, that's why he was so famous. And then the development mm-hmm different brands and and corporations it's just it's like a modern kingdom really but it's really sleek stuff to get you to be a slave to their their companies i agree (laughs) yeah i completely agree and uh i'm not gonna lie they they've got me hooked with the fruity pebbles i am a lawyer loyal fan of fruity pebbles so their branding (laughs) got me forever <laughs> one, one of the one of the first brands that hypnotized me when I was little was coca-cola terrible really thing to, oh yeah I always wanted to get a, a when I was little I'd always want to stop at the store and get a coke and they had some pretty like you know they had songs where I like to teach the world to sing and everyone be holding yeah. their pop bottles up and it was very like oh it's peace it's love like they made they they yeah. hooked you in to something that was making you think that this product was going to bring you that. The deviant part of the sigils and the products in corporations is that they they send you a message of that, but underneath what the product and how things really are is probably a lot different and maybe yeah. even nefarious. And it's a trick. 
It's a trick. Mm -hmm. um, when I took graphic design, I was always told, don't lie about what you're communicating. But too, all too often in real design and media, that's all they do is lie. Right. There we go. Um, Edward Bernays. He's the father of modern, I guess, PR, oh, media, yeah. propaganda, advertising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All Edward Bernays, and he's related to a lot of people who I don't know. Are they in politics? I, I don't know. Oh, and then we got MK MK Ultra drugs. All yeah. that stuff. I don't know. I mean, what do you think about yeah. that kind of stuff in relation to Mandela effects and playing with your minds and mm -hmm. drugs and? Well, how can I put this delicately? I, I absolutely think that there is something to it because, for example, um, the whole water supply of the, uni the United States is being medicated by things like fluoride. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that it is for dental health, um, but fluoride is actually... A, uh, a byproduct, a waste product, and there have been some whistleblowers over time saying that it causes certain mental and emotional defects as well as physical issues. And we don't know the full extent. What if, for example, fluoride is a type of dumbing down tool, for example, and we yeah. all take it? So then that could also be then part of you could say maybe even mk ultra and then we have cern firing up and we know that the cia the fbi all of them they play mind games with the public even the canadian government has done the same mm -hmm. there was an experiment where they were playing wolf sounds right outside of villages and and cities for a while to see how the public would react if they thought that there were hungry, like human flesh hungry wolves out there. And so people were barricading themselves in their houses, refusing to come out because they were so terrified. And so what if it is a multi-pronged attack on the human mind? And what if that dumbs down an individual's ability to notice quantum changes and believe their own eyes, believe their own minds. Does that make sense? It does. And that sort of devious way of making a fake villain that or a fake threat is always how a lot of this stuff's done, whether it was the witch hunts, yeah, COVID, whatever it was, they present it and they build um, a fake reality that's so real and the news is very enticing where people think there really is something that's going to kill them. Mm -hmm. And it's back to propaganda and media and confusing the mind, which is why people get so confused with stuff because it's a form of gaslighting. Is like, mm -hmm. that, let's, take, let's take the witch, hunt, witch hunts, for example. Um, they were sort of witch finder general types of people were around for a while trying to make it happen and convince people in villages that there was witches and everybody just poo pooed them off, even the priests and the pastors. And they were like, this is, that's crazy. And so it didn't stick at first. And what made it stick inadvertently was the um, creation of the Gutenberg press. So you had these people that were able to leave little woodcuts or pamphlets, they were actually able to leave their message behind. It wasn't just verbal. So we could orally talk, but we're recording this and now we can leave our message here. That's why they're so threatened by us on the internet. Yeah. But these witch finder people, because of the creation of technology, were able to leave their message behind and then it sits there and people see it and they see it all the time and they it keeps repeating and then they start to see witches everywhere yeah. they start to interpret every behavior that they never misinterpret before as witches now that can ha happen with us when the medallion effect we can put pull that stuff on ourselves we could do that with conspiracy theories you have to remain objective but there's no doubt that not just the internet but social media 
is literally a, a, a similar catalyst for a lot of things with tricking us and and, and 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 propaganda that that the printing press was and you get all of, that's why you're getting all of these marxist groups and all of this stuff in our culture telling us really unscientific stuff and i'm not going to get into it because this is streaming onto youtube sure. but there's a lot of devious groups and organizations and the cia and they're all operating and it, it's i think we're experiencing something strange not just because the hadron collider but and Mandela effects, but because of the creation of the internet itself and social yeah. media, it's yeah. it's mind it's my it's it's extreme gaslighting. It's no wonder Gen Zs are like totally depressed. Yeah. Oh yeah. And my biggest issue with you could say like the human ego, the common human person, and even the more psychopathic ones. Just most people. I think that most people live a life that is short on integrity, but high on ego and arrogance. And that really freaks me out, really bothers me. I stay very much away from people in my day to day life because I notice that most people can't be trusted to keep their word because as soon as their feelings change, their integrity changes. And then we have to get into this um, hard, maybe hard truth that most human beings, most human animals do not understand what opinion is and what fact is. And if they did, yeah. they would be able to call out all of these agendas and say, no, that is your opinion. That is your way. And this is my way. This is my opinion and be separate. But Unfortunately, it, it doesn't seem to be going that way. And it seems like the advent of the uh, internet really has just become an amplification tool for everything, for better or for worse. And I mm -hmm. think that people need to do their own inner work, need to learn how to develop emotional discipline and learn how to become more logic-based individuals instead of just accepting everyone's opinions as facts. And two, like, this is where, like, <laughs> okay, so I've, I've been diagnosed as highly neurodivergent. Yeah. I don't understand most people's emotions because I, I have a very low ego content and a very low emotional content. People my whole life would get so mad at me because I would just have a strong brick wall between what I say is my opinion and what I say is fact. And people find that offensive. So a lot of the time I'm afraid to even talk with people because of how they'll react. And it's even more so in this day and age. And uh, my heart goes out to anyone who's trying to, to teach a lot more um, logic these days because it seems to me that we're living in a, a seriously illogical society, if that makes sense ripe for the harvesting and and ripe for the gaslighting oh yes especially i mean especially if if things are changing and we we mm -hmm. don't really understand reality and how it's actually working and like you could change something maybe there wasn't mandela effect maybe something happened or you swore you saw something but it's different and then you think somebody did something to you maybe that's really happening or also yeah. like on the internet they can just wipe things clean and you're like yeah. no no i swear to god I, you know and, or you can see things on social media that triggers you and gets you emotional and it may not be it it might be something that has nothing to do with what you're seeing. Maybe it is, maybe something's happening, maybe it's not, but it can be all this stimulus can be really confusing for people. And mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a sound mind or you can't calm yourself down somehow and just take a moment to step back, it's like, I, I can see, I think social media has increased mental health issues. Totally. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, my son's like, I'm glad my son doesn't even really go on it too much. It's like, ooh, it can be it can be really terrible. But and I can see why people I, I think there really is a Mandela effect. But it's like, that's why I said, well, is it a Mandela effect? Or 
are you just misinterpreting it? Because I've seen people in this Mandela group go, no, no, it was that way. And uh, like, like there was this commercial with the dog. He's got a frisbee in his mouth, and it and it's called Ubu Productions. And he goes, sit Ubu, sit Ubu. That's how I remember it. I used to see that commercial. It wasn't a commercial. It was like um the production company's little spiel before the show would start. And okay. there's people saying, no, it says sit Boo Boo. It said sit Boo Boo. And I'm like, no, no, no. no. It totally did. <laughs> and everybody was like, no, it said sit Ubu. And so it's just, it's, it seems like really weird, weird stuff. And, and I don't know if it's just because we're transfixed on logos and media, but I mean, really nobody in history has been barraged with this much media. Yeah. As, as we have. So maybe it's doing something to our brain. I don't it know. It could be. I, I don't know. I, I think that anything and everything is possible. And I do think that there are um, people who are making mistakes in memory. I think that that's perfectly valid as well. And I'm guilty of that too. I think that just being here in the 3D our brains, our minds, our recalls, they're not perfect. And I think that that's okay, too. Yeah. But I like that idea of, like, what John aside in the chat was saying about doing past life regression and sort of making a Mandela effect as therapy. Have you had much experience? Like, do you know anyone who's using this, like, almost like a therapeutic thing to get stuff out of their life or to change things that, like, they have regrets or or our past or they want to see if they, there's something in a past life that's making their life suck today I don't know do you have you like dealt with that kind of as a th Mandela effect therapy yeah so I, I have actually um done therapy like that in the past for some of my clients and the way that I would structure it is first we would um focus on radical acceptance so we would be, I would work with a person to be open-minded to anything and everything. You might be mistaken. There might be something going on in the quantum universe, or maybe your higher self has wanted this change, <clears throat> or maybe somehow accidentally something has changed. And then once we can get past that hurdle of radical acceptance, I would talk to them about just accepting the fact that this is how something is seeming to be right now. And if they can get past that second step, that the reality seems to be this, like, okay, so here are the possibilities. Here is the reality of what you've got right now. And then the third step, here is what you want. Let's actualize this. Let's talk about this. Get it all out on paper and get it all detailed. And then the final step is how can we get you there, regardless of um the the previous acceptance steps regardless of your feelings regardless of anything that's stacked against you and then that's where we would start talking about the use of say prayer in a certain sense the way that i regard prayer and that seemed to get some pretty good results for people who seem to take it seriously mm -hmm. and some of the things that they would look for when they were allegedly jumping these timelines would be personal Mandela effects. So in Reddit, or I'm sorry, on Reddit, there used to be um, a board that would talk about dimension jumping. I don't know if it's still active or not, to be honest. I haven't been there in years. Um, but I was, I was a lurker there. And someone had the brilliant idea of tagging the board with a certain number. They would say, welcome to dimensional jumping subreddit or whatever. We are in dimension like 3216 or something. And I wrote down that number specifically. And I took a screenshot of it on my phone at the time. And I came back later and that number had changed. Interestingly, though, the number that I had written down on my phone and the screenshot still showed the old number. And this was apparently something that you couldn't change once it was set in stone. But again, I was a lurker. I don't really know how Reddit works. <clears throat> so it seems that it, the Mandela effect could be useful even for jumping timelines consciously. Um, 
Yeah, I think that th that's my take on on the Mandela effect with therapy. I think that's all I've got for you there. I hope that helps. Right. <laughs> it would be it would be interesting to sort of look at um, that. I did a past life regression once. I'm not going to go into it because it was really mm. bizarre. But okay, I, I don't know. I I think I think it may have not right away, not like bam, 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 bam. But I think it, it would make your mind see things differently and, and, and cause some sort of shuffles or changes. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't paying much attention, but I could see how it would have that effect. Yeah. Um, 100%. And same with therapy. Like sometimes we're probably attracting things or things are happening um, because of the way we're thinking. And if we start changing that, I, I don't doubt that. I, I don't know. Something that you thought you bought, thought you bought was pink is now blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. And it's weird synchronicities. Maybe you chose a different color now that you changed stuff. I sure. have no idea. Could be something oh, as yeah. strange as that. Now we've yeah. been uh, over, over an hour. I've got one more little video clip we can kind of discuss and then tie it up. And okay. it went by quickly. Wow. <laughs> yeah, go. one more little clip. It kind of does a little tidbit about um, the top five or six different sort of um, Mandela effects. Here we go. And uh, top six most weird Mandela effects. Do you remember Cruella Deville's coat with Dalmatian spots? Apparently, it never had spots. Pikachu with a black tail. People say he's never had a black tail. The bucket list phrase wasn't around until the movie came out in 2007. Air Jordan jump man now has pants. Mississippi no longer the longest river in the United States. The Berenstein bear spelled with the URA. Six most weird. Well, that was obviously some kind of special effect he did on the Bear Stain Bear book. But there is so the one about the bucket list movie, I can definitely mm -hmm. tell you that was a term before because me and my friends used to say talk about our bucket list before that movie came out. Yeah. So I find that yeah, weird. But there, there's kind of some strange I, I don't know if they're like the Air Jordans one. I, you know, a lot of these, the Pikachu, a lot of these things, I'm like, well, I don't know. I didn't, I can't say because I didn't really pay attention to Pikachu. I wasn't collecting Pokemon stuff. And so it's just, it's like interesting that, like I said, it's all toys and, and, and design. And mm -hmm. I mean, there is the possibility that they put one logo out and then switched it and are just saying, and they don't remember and they don't have record sure. of it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. Because when you're that big of a brand, you usually, all your low, everything's done to a T professionally and recorded and archived. You know, you don't mess around. So, but it's not impossible for things to get lost. But I don't know. It's it's interesting. It's just a little bit of a, of a reminder of some of the more well-known, I guess you could say. The well-known ones. Um, the, have you heard of the Fruit of the Loom cornucopia on the logo? Yep. And I remember it having a cornucopia. So does my husband. Yep. And yep. once again, I never paid any attention. I'm like, I don't know. I wasn't paying. I go, I never got <laughs> Fruit of the Loom. I, I can't remember. But he's like, no, oh. I swear to God, it had the cornucopia. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh, and someone apparently found a shirt with it on it, but I don't know. It's so bizarre. It could have been. I, go oh, ahead. No, go ahead. It could have been a prank. Um, that shirt. I know what you're talking about. I, who knows if it's real or not, or if someone was just having fun and made that and then roughed up the t-shirt and then donated it to Goodwill or whatever. Who knows? Yeah. But I do remember the cornucopia. Um, I was fascinated by the Fruit of the Loom logo when I was like four years old because 
I, I didn't understand why fruit and vegetables would be coming or fruit would be coming out of, um, out of a giant basket horn. You know what I mean? Right. So when it, it has sort of like a, almost a, a Greek mythology root, I think, or in, mm. I, I don't, I, yeah, it's, it's got a long history, the cornucopia and fruit. That's why it makes sense for it to be there in a way. Because yeah. It's not, it's not like some new invention. It would be pointing back to history, mm -hmm. you know, as an iconic image. Um, yeah. But it, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's fascinating. Now, uh, we're going to have to tie this one up. It's get at the minute and tw we've been for an hour and 12. So <laughs> do you have any last things that you, you want to point out that you're writing about or that you're looking at that are, is important about the Mandela effect? Sure. Well, for the Mandela effect, as well as any other type of um, magic, that, and I spell that with a Q at the end, Q for quantum, I believe that that is found in liminal spaces, liminal times, and liminal places. So I think that if people want to experience more of this, they can begin to hone their mindfulness and their objective observation skills. And then after that, <clears throat> make novel choices. Expose yourself to, of course, please be safe, activities and places where you normally wouldn't go really shake things up in your life because that is in my understanding the safer way to invite more magic into your life you don't have to go through a near-death experience to invite more of it in my opinion and i think that if more people can build their mindfulness and their sense of everyday adventure, I think that will be well on the road to creating heaven on earth. Yeah, you're, you're consciously creating things rather than unconsciously emotionally reacting to everything. Um, one last question. Do you think ghosts have something to do with Mandela effect? Because I did put ghosts in the title. So I'm like, I just realized I didn't say one darn word about ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're uh, right. I've had experiences, by the way. <laughs> and I have a haunted house, so I was like, I got to tie this in. <laughs> do you think yeah. that's part of Yeah, I, I absolutely do think so. And my near-death tale that I, I shared at the beginning, I regard that as a quantum ghost story. So when I came back, I started having other brand new Mandela experiences that are um, actually bigger than ones I've ever had before. So I think that they are heavily tied in. And I think that ghosts and spirits and the Mandela effect, all of it is just the quantum way of the universe. And I think it's really interesting to see how all of these lines can cross. Um, I think too that sometimes we, the so-called living, appear to other people in nearby vibrations, maybe even as ghosts. And um, maybe too, that's why sometimes ghosts yell at people to get out and whatnot, because to them, mm -hmm. maybe we are the, the ghosts or whatever. So I think it's all one giant circle. <laughs> right. And there's just different, like, um, I guess you could say dimensions or vibrations, but it's all layered on top of each other. Well, that's interesting. And um, I asked that because I, I I used to always joke about, you know, when I would put something somewhere, I swear to God, I had it there. And, um, I would go to get it and it's not there. And I'd be like, oh, I must have a ghost. But I, I, I literally just did that this morning. I was looking yesterday before I streamed with my guest. I was looking for this um, NARS. Um, it's like a peachy. It's really, you put it on your cheeks and your lips is this makeup stuff. And I swear it was in my pack that I carry. And I <laughs> emptied the pack. I emptied everything out. I went through all my makeup boxes. I emptied the pack again. It wasn't there. I emptied the pack again. I, I checked so many times. I'm like, oh, screw it. I'm just going to start the live stream. I, I, I won't use it. And yeah. then I went to pick my pack up to go out before I did the stream this, this morning because I had to grab some stuff at the store. And I opened my pack and it was sitting right 
there in my yep. pack that I emptied five times yep. yesterday at least. And I was like, yep. you little bugger, someone must know I like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so funny. We've had the same kind of things happen to us as well. So you're you're not alone in that. And I I have had the same problem with my makeup kit too. I'll go and look for something, tear the whole thing apart, look everywhere in the bathroom. I know I put it there, it's not there. Come back 10 minutes later and it's there, like sitting right on top. No. <laughs> and it drives you crazy because you're like, okay, yeah. I must be blind. But then yeah. I well, well, what if it's disappearing and reappearing? Or that's, that's in one reality, think. it's not there. In one reality, it is there. And, and Schrodinger's uh, blush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming for the show. Hopefully, you'll come back if you have a, another book to promote or another topic you want to talk about. You're always welcome to come back. Um, I stream a lot. So, yeah, just let me know if you have anything new you want to discuss in the future. Very cool. Thank you so much for having me on. I sincerely appreciate being here. I have some cool stuff coming up here soon. Um, I think I told you about it. I'm going to be working with Steve Mara on Project uh, Doorway here soon. And then working with Barry Fitzgerald as well. We're supposed to be doing a few different things together. So that's my main focus coming up here. Um, there's not going to be a lot of new content on my channel yet. I am on bed rest mostly until I can get in to see more doctors, get more tests mm -hmm. run. But I am cleared to have awesome conversations just like this one. So hopefully I can join okay. you again soon, my dear. Excellent. Well, get well, rest up. I'm going to put you in the little green room here and we'll just finish off and I'll be right there. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that show. Remember, support the show by reposting on X, sharing content, subscribing, and of course, the buy me a coffee address is right down at the bottom if you want to support financially because it does cost to run this show. Uh, there's not going to be a podcast tomorrow. I have a whole slew of things I have to focus on. I have a job interview, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so no show tomorrow. There's a beast system show with me and Emily on Thursday and uh, Blake. I believe that's at 10 p.m. Eastern. And then on Friday, tinfoil hat Fridays, me and Emily uh, around, I think it's 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be around talking about you want to talk about Mandela effects? We're going to be talking about Donald Trump as a time traveler. We talked about this one other time on Emily's show, but we're going to go for it and expand and go into all these weird things that are literally in history that literally predict Donald Trump. And we're, you know, there's this theory out there, this conspiracy theory that the man isn't just mega, he's a mega time traveler. So we're going to go there. And um, I thank you guys for showing up and watching Tilly's show. Please remember to go check out her YouTube channel, The Weird Walk Home, and support my guests. And I will see you on Thursday, Friday for the next show. You guys take care.